Hi y'all, welcome to my channel and in today's video we are inviting you to do a lesson with us in the good and the beautiful's arthropods, so stay tuned. Okay, so if you are new, welcome to my channel, Pursuing Peace. My name is Dina, and I am a homeschooling mama of five kiddos, seven and under. And on this channel, I share my passions for Christ, for homeschooling, and for encouraging mamas in this crazy but beautiful season of motherhood. So if you'd like to join me on this journey, then click the subscribe button down below, and don't forget to click the little bell icon so that way you know whenever new videos pop up. You can also follow me over on Instagram Instagram at Dina underscore pursuing peace. Okay, you guys, so we are going to just do a lesson today from the arthropods science um, unit study from the good and the beautiful. And I'd like to thank the good and the beautiful for sponsoring this video. Um, I love partnering with them. Um, and this is also a collaboration with Yasmin over at Mommy on the Move. She is gathering as many mamas together as she can to try to show you guys a lesson from almost all of the science mm -hmm. units that the Good and the Beautiful have available right now. We did this recently with the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts where um, there's a playlist where you can go and see almost every level of the Good and the Beautiful. So if you're interested in seeing a lesson in any of the other science units, then check out the playlist down below. I will also have Yasmin's channel down below in the description box too, so check her out. All right, you guys, well, I am going to turn the camera around and we are going to start our lesson for today. So the first thing that I do um, before each lesson is I prep for um, whatever supplies we need. And in this case, we get to have a little snack for our lesson. It's a little kind of experiment and project. And what I have been doing recently with all of our unit studies is that I will go to our local library and pick a book that goes along with whatever we are studying and we have read aloud time or we call it cuddle up time because we all cuddle up on the couch um, before we actually start the unit study um, and just read a book. I just found that the kids learn so much from just reading these books and so I wanted to saturate our school this year with good picture books. So today we are going to be doing lesson six um, from the arthropods unit. And this is gonna be a fun lesson. I'm really looking forward to it. And if you're interested to see how I organize all of this and what I use to organize um, the science units from the good and the beautiful, I have a whole video about that and I will leave that linked down in the description box. So let's go ahead and get started. Here it tells you the objective, like what your child is gonna learn, and then it goes into the activity supplies that you're gonna need for the lesson, which I already gathered up. And then it says it pretty clearly, sorry about the glare of the lights, it's rainy here so we're gonna have to use the lights today. Um, but here it says to read to the child. So do you remember some of the reasons why insects are important? I know, I know pollination. Oh yes, pollination. Do you remember? I, yes? Um, taking flowers. Flowers, so, so like pollinating, yeah, yeah. So pollination is a big part of why insects are important. So today we're gonna learn about that and talk about that just a little bit. So we're gonna do an activity to show you how bees pollinate a flower, okay? Mm -hmm. And for this activity, we have... Cheetos. Cheetos. Yummy Cheetos! And can anybody see what's on the bottom of this? Chocolate! <laughs> yes! Chocolate. Cheetos so, and chocolate, yeah. yummy! So in this case, the chocolate mm. is going to be the nectar, and the Cheetos are the pollen of the flower, okay? So you're gonna pretend you're the little busy bee. Hold on, hold on. 
and you are going to put it, we're gonna do it one by one, okay? Mm -hmm. You're gonna put your fingers and you're gonna try to get the nectar. Do you remember what the nectar is? The chocolate. The chocolate, right, Bubs? What's what? the nectar? Um, chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> Pollen. Now, did you mean to get the pollen on your fingers? No. No, it just happens, right? Go ahead, bud. Look at all that pollen on your fingers. Can I maybe try to get one more? <laughs> Some of the pollen brushes off its legs and slips into the flower to fertilize it. When flowering trees, Bushes or plants are fertilized. The pollen allows the blossom to grow into fruits and vegetables. It's helping our vegetable garden, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I did that wrong, but <laughs> it's okay. We still kind of learned, right? So we're gonna, you're gonna pretend you're a bee and just kind of get into the nectar. This is how it's actually supposed to be done. So get, get your nectar. I know we ate all the nectar already, but it's okay. Now take your, your honeybee and go and try to get nectar from another flower. And so what do you leave behind? More, some pollen? Yeah, you leave behind some of the little pollen Can I get from more? this flower. And that's how that works. That's how the pollination works. More? Okay, so what we know about insects is that they are important to animal life and to plants, right? They're super important. And they and help everything ants. keep going, right? Even ants, that's right, even ants. Is it even spiders? Yep, even spiders. So we learned that bees even use- Even giant tarantulas. Even giant tarantulas. <laughs> we learned that bees use pollen for food and also for pollinating flowers. Bees pollinate 80% of flowers. So like 80 out of 100 flowers they oh. pollinate. So it says, give each child a seed. I don't have sesame seeds, but I do have these seeds. So, so everyone grab a seed, just one seed. All right, so a bee's brain is only about the size of a seed. Yeah, and it's actually the size of a sesame seed, which a sesame seed is a little bit smaller than that. Isn't that crazy? Shows hope, yes. Then we can't see it. Yeah, it'd be really hard to see, huh? So it truly shows the might and majesty of God to see that he created such a sophisticated system in something so tiny. Isn't that so tiny? Oh, sticky. Huh? This is really, this is really how small a bee's brain is? Yeah, it's actually even smaller than that. A bee's tiny brain makes very complicated navigational calculations and has a fantastic memory. So some types of bees make honey. These bees suck up nectar from flowers. They turn the nectar into honey in their bellies. Huh, that's interesting. Bears are well known for liking honey, but other creatures enjoy honey too. Can y'all think of any other creatures that enjoy honey? Raccoons? Uh, yeah, raccoons. I don't know. Maybe squirrels do. <gasps> people! People enjoy honey, that's right. Oh, yeah. People. I don't know about squirrels, but skunks, opossums, Ew. birds, birds, bats. Bats. Birds. Yep. Yeah. So the average honeybee produces about this much honey in its mm -hmm. lifetime. Wait, whoa! whoa. This Wait, much honey. Is that honey? Look at the honey, baby. When Wait, is that honey? Wow. Is that real honey? It is. Look how, do you think that's a little bit of honey or a lot of honey? A little bit. It's a little. So can you imagine how many bees it would take to make enough honey to fill a whole jar? A lot. That would be a lot of bees, right? 
Okay, so we have two new vocabulary words, and these are easy to spell. One of them is the word hive, a home for a colony of bees or wasps. Yes, that's a clean piece of paper. So spell the word hive. H I V E. H I V E. Mm hmm. H I V E. H I V E. H I V E. H I V E. Yeah. And what, what is a hive? It's a, a home for a colony of bees or wasps. It's a home, right? It's their home. Now, the next one that I want you to um, draw or write, sorry, is the word cell. C E L L. C E L L. C E L L. Now a cell is hexagonal beeswax chamber used for raising eggs and larvae and also for storing honey. You see all the hexagons? See, that's a cell. Each one of those are cells. Those dots kind of. Each little. Look, that's a that's a hive. That's a, all the little cells in the hive. Oh my. What's woozy, Mom? That's cool, huh? All right, so what? let's go hang up, hang these up on our vocabulary wall. So the hive. Do y'all want to draw a little hive on your on your piece of paper? Yeah, you hive color in Yeah. Time. Draw a little understand. Yeah, draw a little hive on your on your paper, okay? So the hive is where the colony or group of bees or wasps live. There are three types of bees in a colony. The queen bee, the worker bees, and the drones. There is only one queen bee in a colony. She is bigger than all the other bees, and it is her job to lay the eggs. That's why she's bigger, because there's a lot of eggs inside her. <laughs> she is the leader of the colony and uses smells to communicate with the other bees. Let's look here at this picture. Can you see the queen bee in this picture, in the middle? Um, yeah, I can see her. How can you tell it's the queen bee? Um, she. Her abdomen, it's not very, um, it's not very... It looks like she's, like, longer than all the other bees. Yeah, so she's and bigger? It, mm -hmm. And, it, and oh. her legs are also fatter. Oh, yeah. So she's and bigger. a bit fuzzier. Mm -hmm. A bit fuzzier, yeah. And then, um, what? and then her abdomen, it's not really the same colors. It's not, like, um, black yeah. and yellow. It's just more yellow brown. Oh, okay, what? nice. The legs look bigger, and the wings are right here, and but the other ones are like here. Oh, oh that's interesting. That. Now look at the picture down below here. Do you see how the drone has like really big eyes? Yeah, they're so big they look like they're touching each other. Yeah. <laughs> look. Uh. Oh, Adeline, do you see the big eyes? This is a drone. Hmm? So a drone has big what? Eyes. Eyes, that's right. Okay, so we are going to learn about the different types of bees, and I actually yes. printed out this out from and I can online, and she can just color it, and she can do whatever she wants to do, and then I created this on Canva. Um, and we're going to learn about the different um, types of bees and what their um, distinctions are. In the book, it actually yeah. says um, for them to write this stuff in their science journal. Um, but since my kids are smaller, um, they I thought that maybe creating something like this would be a little bit more helpful for them to actually see the bee and then have a place to write it. So you're going to take your pencils and which one, can you point to which one you think the queen bee is? Yes. Bubs, which one do you think the queen bee? <gasps> I think you're right.
nice hi baby she drew a little hive while i was talking and these are the bees um like these are the bees popping out nice of so the hive they're going to work Okay, so do y'all remember what a cell is? Yes. What is a cell? <laughs> I understand, I understand how you feel. I want you to draw cells inside a hive, just like that, okay? Draw the cells inside the hive, just like that, okay? Aside from drone cells and queen cells, all comb cells that you're drawing are exactly the same size. This amazing engineering marvel is achieved by the action of thousands of bees working together as a team. Isn't that amazing that all these little bees with these tiny brains can work together? Look, Mama. Good. Good. Like Good here. job, baby. You mean like Good here? job. Like here? <laughs> Does it kind of look like a dragon? That's a lot of little... Cells? cells? Yeah. Oh, <gasps> wow, no, look at that. Baby, that's but so that good. She did it for me. So anyway, I took the class. I did all the assignments, and uh, that's when I started beekeeping. And that year, Del Monte came in, and with their aerial sprayers, my bees all right. So now I go into my stingia like this. Well, it's full of honey, so it really has a hard time bending the stingia. So they don't want to start anything. They're fully exposed. So, in a long story short, I collected that beehive. And uh, that part I produced 150 pounds of honey. It's about 90% of what we do. What? So there's 156 different what? Why you have gloves? Gloves. Yeah. We pollinated. We work. So why are bees important for agricultural crops? So why are bees important for the crops? Oh, oh, I know. It'll, it'll make it grow bigger. Uh-huh. It'll get juicier. Yep. And It'll get like better. That's right. Remember he said like the difference between a farm that wasn't pollinated and then a farm that was pollinated. Like the, the farmers came back and said, wow, this is amazing. It's just juicier. It, the flavor is, is so much better. So that's God's handiwork. That's God doing that, right? All right, guys. So that was it. That was our lesson about bees in our arthropods, arthropods unit study um, from the good and the beautiful. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you know whenever new videos pop up. You can also follow us over on Instagram at Dina underscore pursuing peace. And don't forget to go down and check the playlist of all of the other mamas that are participating in this collaboration and check out all of the different unit studies from the good and the beautiful in that playlist down below all right you guys well i hope that you are having a blessed day and i will see you next time with another video bye 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 bye, <laughs> bye. <laughs> us in the good and the beautiful's arthropods. Did I say that right? Arthur, 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 Arthro, Arthro, Arthur. <laughs> in the good and the beautiful's arthropod science study. No, what am I saying? Arthropods. <laughs> so awkward. Arthropods. So stay tuned. With a tube-like mouth. Like the good and the beautiful? <laughs> Yes, baby. Worker bees are female and they make up most of the bees in the hive. Each worker bee. Bye. Bye.